Good day folks, welcome along to the vlog. If you've just watched my previous one, you will know that we've just made a fantastic salt and pepper mix while drinking a brilliant version of the Vacant Gesture from Homebrew Griffo. And on this vlog, just over at the fridge, now I'm back. We're having an American Pale Ale from Mark in Ireland. Sorry mate, I forgot your second name. <laughs> oh, there you go, Mark Cooper. Friggin' hell. Mark Cooper, bottle from Keg. He sent me this a while ago and I've been meaning to do a video on it, but uh, I've had so much on my plate, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll lump it in with a cooking video. Gives another dimension. Who's doing beer reviews and cooking videos? Nobody. Well, there is now. Me. That's right. So, we're making salt and pepper king prawns. Ta-da! And uh, there's a trick to this. The trick is the salt and pepper mix, which I've just made on the previous video. If you've not seen that, the link is in the description below. So go across and have a look at that. And then you need, obviously, some king prawns. Goes without saying. You need an egg. Yes, an egg. You need an onion. Or about that much you want. Depends how much you like onion. You need a couple of green chill eyes. If they're really hot, maybe one. I like it hot. Matron. And you need a bit of MSG, optional in this case. I'm going to just pop a little bit into the egg. And this is the key ingredient here. Uh, oh, oil for frying. This is sunflower oil because you can get it hot. We're going to heat this up to 175 and then let it go a bit more. But the key ingredient, free from gluten, plain flour. This is where it's at. Do you know why? This is perfect for deep frying. Rice flour. Okay, come on, help me out, Canon 80D. Rice flour, potato starch, corn flour. These are all flours that create crispy finishes. Wheat flour, no. Sticky, glutinous, no good. For deep frying. If you want to buy potato flour on its own or potato starch, it's expensive. But this stuff is a pound a kilo that your local Asda or Mochisons. So go for the gluten free flour. That's the trick. Right, I haven't tidied the kitchen for this job, so we're just going with the flow. Oh, you also need a few spring onions as well. Again, optional, I like them. Adds a bit of colour to the dish, don't you know? So, I'm just whisking up my egg here, because what we're going to be doing is throwing our prawns into it. We've got three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, go on 18 is enough, 18 is enough. So we've got 18 prawns in here and the oil, the oil is coming up to temperature so we're going to get these little beauties well coated. There we are. The oil's at 170. Just move this thermometer out of the way. I've also got this handy little tool, which is really good. It's a wire basket. So I learned all this from a chap on YouTube, of course, called Quan Vong. K H O A N V O N G. I'll try and link to his uh, videos in the description. This flower thing was my invention though. I'm holding the rights for that. But he's opened my eyes on Asian cuisine and, well, he's really bloody good. So I'm just going to drop these prawns into this potato starch. And in fact, I'm going to take a smaller one of these wire doodly doos and we're going to completely coat our prawns in this beautiful stuff. 
starchy wonderness. And the good thing about these uh, wire basket spatula things is you can pick up your prawns. I'm really overexposed here, aren't I, folks? So I just apologise for that. You can pick up your prawns and you can give them a wobble side to side like so to make sure that you don't have too much flour on them because that's the key too much flour not good frying and then we're going to go over to our super hot oil we've just got three on here look did you hear that? very little racket very little noise let's do it again got a few more on here this time check this out Oh, hardly any noise at all, because the oil is hot. Let's go again. Beautiful. Again, quick as that. That's 18 prawns in there now. 18 prawns frying away. Wonderful, what a wonderful thing that is. So we're just going to move them around. We've still got the heat on. If I was doing chicken, then these would cook a lot longer than they are going to at the moment. But because we're doing prawns, then this is only going to take a minute or two. Over here, I have my wok that I've literally just used to make the salt and pepper mix. So all I've done is hit it with a scourer, put it in some warm water, rinse it out. It's already forming some surface rust. That's not a problem though. It's good for you. It provides iron in your diet. So these prawns are getting pretty close. They don't take long and we're going to drain them into the pan because we want to have that oil that drips out of the prawns to fry our vegetables in. So while that's happening over here, I'm going to take this opportunity to cut up our onion. And we want the onion in relatively small dices. So it's a good job I've got a sharp knife for this. And you can use as much or as little onion as you like. I've only got 18 prawns there, so I don't really need a lot of onion, don't need a lot at all. Then we're going to need a little bit of dark soy sauce, our salt and pepper mix, and the prawns, which are now done. They are done. So we'll take them out. We'll take them off the heat and we'll move that oil to one side. So, in the interim, I'm not going to heat that pan up yet because I promised you a beer review. We're going to crack open Mark's American Pale Ale before we dive in. And if Mark's watching, I know he's going to be licking his lips while I'm doing this dish. Mate, your beers that I've had so far have been outstanding. But this one has just foamed a little bit out of the bottle. Anyway, we can live with that. Carbonation high. So I'm missing the poor, terrible beer reviewer. You can tell I've already had a pint tonight, can't you? So I'm going to try and squeeze all this in here because it was bottled off the keg. How we got it into the bottle in the first instance with that much life in it, I will never know. But here we are. And here it is. So, this is Mark Cooper's. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my goodness. It's beery goodness all over the place. And a terrible advertisement for John Smith. Get it, get that, turn it round. We don't want to see that. So, yes, I'm going to dive into this now, folks. And I'm bloody looking forward to it. Cheers, Mark. Thank you very much, sir, for sending this over 
it truly is appreciated. Hot bomb. Oh my God. Shut that door. Jesus Christ. That is as hoppy as a bucket of frogs. I am not kidding you. Mmm. It's fucking beautiful. And I don't often swear on this channel. That, mate, is one of the best beers I've had all year. Hands down. Mmm. If I had that on tap in the pub, I'd make a fortune. I'm not kidding you. Anyway, thank you so much, sir. I'll give you a little bit of a description. It's got a toffee American IPA kind of note through the back of it. A little bit of uh, biscuit there. I want to say multi-character, but that's not doing it justice. It's definitely got a, a caramel sweet note to it. The head, as you can see, is not going anywhere. That might be down to my pouring or the carbonation level, whatever. It's good. It's tight. It feels nice on the mouth. There's plenty of body left in this beer as well. Um, and the hop character completely dominates. As soon as you get it in your mouth. Mm, the sweetness from the malt and that hop phew, dominates the finish. Because the sweetness of the malt is up front. It's wonderful, mate. It really is wonderful. I wish I could brew beers like that. Right. Let's get back to the cooking. So, block the shit out of it is uh, probably going to be the name of this video. So, I'm just going to take a little ladle and grab, you know that hot oil that we've just took off? Just a little bit of that hot oil, and I'm just going to pop that into the wok here. And uh, we've still got our drained prawns in the basket. But the key now is to fry up our vegetables that we've got here. And that starts with our onion. Probably a little bit too much onion there for this dish. And then, oh, I've got beer burps. Focus down on me, please. We're going to be putting these beautiful finger chilies in there. Oh, if they stay on the chopping board, that is. Come on, boys. Don't run off. We love you, really. We do. We love your chilies. We do. We love your chilies. We do. So I'll pick up the ones that we dashed around the area and chuck that in. And you know what I've forgotten? I want to kill myself for it. Garlic. I'll quickly grab some. Right, because I'm in a rush, I'm not going to spare the horses. I need three big chunks of garlic and I need them five minutes ago. Probably don't need three actually, two will do because I'm only doing a small-ish portion. And you know what, on the plus side, put the garlic in second, you don't really burn it do you? So let's get that garlic in, just going to mix this onion. I've got the onion on the low heat by the way, just to allow the flavours to come out. We don't want to be burning it. Doesn't matter if we brown it. That's fine. I'm going to chop up this garlic and get it into the dish. Oh, there we go. There's loads there, look. That's more than enough, eh? Let's pop that beautiful, beautiful garlic into the dish. I hope you're following along, folks. I hope I've not left anyone behind. Right. Let's get on the pan, because this is where the magic's happening. Oh yes, it really is. Shut that door. Here we go. While we're letting the flavors come out, we're just gonna have another 
tipple of Mark's fantastic American Pale Ale. Freaking right we are. Mmm. 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 So good. So good. And I'm blaming Kelvin as well for providing that vacant gesture at 4.7. Might have got me a little bit tipsy. So we're doing a bit of tipsy cooking right now. Right. Things are going to get loud, folks. I need the extractor on for this because <coughs> it takes your breath away. So what we need to do now, because these have let the flavour out, we need to add our prawns. In they go. Prawns in. Bit of a dance. Just like that. And then we're going to get our salt and pepper mix, which I'm shaking up. We're going to just sprinkle a little bit of that. Just sprinkle some, just like you're seasoning your fish and chips. And we're going to turn the heat up. There we go. Maybe just a little bit more. Not too much though. You probably only want between a half a teaspoon and a teaspoon of that salt and pepper mix on this many prawns. After all, there's only 18 prawns here. So this is where it gets interesting. A little bit of dark soy sauce. That's mainly for colour. That's all that's for really. Bit of dark soy sauce, mainly for colour. And then the real flavour comes from a little bit of cooking wine. Watch this. This is when I cough my lungs up. Oh my goodness. And that's completely changed the dish. Now we have some real colour in there. A little bit of wine, another squirt. I like the taste. And why not indeed? Loosens everything up, deglazes the pan a little bit, and brings out the flavours. So there we go. That, folks, is it. So we're just going to grab ourselves a plate, we're going to zoom down on it, and we're going to have a look at our creation. There we go folks. Salt and pepper, king prawns, and to take the edge off, and I can't recommend this enough, a nice pint of American Pale Ale. Oh my God, I'm such a lucky man. Oh, let's kill the heat, not the light. So there we go. So all I need to do is kind of get a bit of a thumbnail going here. Right, how's this for presentation? This is how we do our thumbnails here on YouTube, you know, folks. This is how we do our thumbnails. And there we go. Check that out. So please try it at home. It's bloody gorgeous. I know it is before I've tasted it, because I've made it before. Oh my God. <coughs> so yeah, as I said, bloody gorgeous. I've made it before. Authentic as well. Mmm. Tastes like you've just bought it from a Chinese restaurant, it really does. It is totally delish. Mm. And the best pairing in the world. Oh, really hoppy American Pale Ale. Thank you, Mark. Anyway, folks. Mm. I'm going to eat this. And I'm going to lay down in the room and thank whatever deity it is out there for being such a lucky man. Oh my goodness. Can life really get any better than this? Probably not. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, cheers. Excellent.
This is probably one of the best dishes I've ever made, by the way. 